Today we're going to be installing Oracle side marker lights in my C7 Corvette from VetLights.com. Hi, I'm Lily and you're watching the Corvette channel. So hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Scott and today this is kind of an update follow up to a video that I did a while back where I put side marker lights that I had bought from eBay uh, trying to cut a corner because this, you know, when you're doing this car and you're doing my wife's car, um, you're doing everything in double. So I was trying to save a few dollars and I bought some uh, side marker lights that look exactly like these Oracle ones except uh, they're half three quarters of the price so anyway what we did is I went ahead and I did the video that you're gonna be able to see and I put these lights in and not too long after that uh, I started driving the car at nighttime and a lot of us don't drive the cars at night but I, I was and um, it was I, my schedule had changed I was driving to work early in the morning and the lights were on so I'd be going down the freeway and my uh, check prior, tire pressure monitor system would come on and um, and it was showing that I was losing the uh, the, the pressure from the uh, passenger front tire and um, so when you shut the car off and turn back on the daytime wouldn't have a problem I drive home no big deal next day have the same problem again so um, I happened to happen to work with a good friend of mine that uh, used to do aircraft lighting and um, we kind of figured out that basically what was happening is that the LEDs that are in the cheap knockoff ones they're actually emitting a signal that's very or a frequency that's very similar to the signal that's coming out of the tire pressure monitor and so basically what it was doing is drowning out the signal going to the antenna for the TPS so what we did is we went ahead and we put uh, aluminum foil behind each one of the marker lights and then taped it in place, which then blocked the signal and then allowed the TPS to start working again. And, that, and so I got rid of the problem. Um, now, this is a 2014. It was only the 2014 that I had this problem. Jennifer's is a 2016. Didn't have that problem at all. So I, I don't know if this is just something that uh, is just related to 2014s, I'm not sure, but I just wanted to make that very clear that it, it happened in the 14 and not the 16. So um, anyway, what we did was that worked fine for months. And then you've seen all my different videos of me uh, changing and putting the wing on the, tent, on the uh, rear end of the car, had to take the bumper off. And when I took the bumper off, that foil was kind of in the way and I said, ah, heck with it, I just pulled it off and got rid of it. Then I went ahead and I put the new nose on the car. And um, when I did that, I got rid of the foil off of the, off of the lights. And then as soon as I had to drive it at night, bam, here comes that light the, up there again telling me that my sensors were bad. So anyway, uh, back in the original video, I had said, I don't know how they're going to respond. I don't know how they're going to work. Um, you know, they might work great for a day, might work great for 10 years. I don't know. But um, I did make a kind of a challenge to the manufacturers and the sponsors that are out there. You know, those of you, any of the, any of the different companies that make these, the, you know, um, if after watching this video you'd like to be able to sponsor the channel, send me a set of your, uh, you know, your markers. Uh, because you think they're better or whatever, I'll do a comparison video and I'll be able this way if you honestly believe that yours are better and that's why you charge more, then send me a set and we'll put them in the car and we'll see. We'll compare the two of them and see how it goes, okay? So, and so uh, Cole from vetlights.com, he had seen that. He says, hey Scott, you know what? I got a light that will take care of that problem. We don't have that problem because we use superior LEDs. We don't have that problem. So he went ahead and he sent me out a set that looks identical to the, the factory ones. Um, you can see right here, or it looks, I shouldn't say factory ones, they look identical to the knockoff ones that I put in here. Um, and so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna change these out 
and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll test it and I'll have that in the it's very easy to repeat the problem that I was having um, it didn't do it when you're driving around just city streets that type of thing it seemed to do it always when you were on the freeway you're driving down the road cruising and then about 10 minutes 15 minutes after the lights are on BAM here comes your light and then you can't get rid of it until you shut your lights off and drive for another maybe five minutes and then the computer would kick back in get the signal back from the other light uh, the other signal or the other uh, sending unit and then you'd be good good again until you turn your lights back on um, so anyway what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to change these out and um, and then we'll go ahead and we'll test them now uh, as you know I have the front ZR1 front nose on here which means I have to take all this stuff off there, you guys don't have all that stuff on your cars. Most of you don't. You, it's just normally without this this up, uh, upper winglet here. So I'm not going to film this one. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to include the original uh, video that I did of taking the old one out, putting the new one in, and uh, without that on that bumper. So that way you guys will be able to see how it normally is done, not just how I've I've done it here. If you ended up wanting, if you have this in the front. You're just going to need to be able to take those same three screws that I'm talking about in the video. You'll take those same three out that holds this winglet in place and get the winglet out of the way to be able to do the, do the lights exactly the same way. So anyway, we're going to jump into the video. We're going to show you that. And then uh, well, once we're done, then we'll go ahead and we'll uh, hop in the car. We'll test it. We'll make sure it works. And uh, then we'll go from there. Okay, so uh, sit back and relax and hopefully you enjoy the video. So guys, I said I wasn't going to actually film this, but then after I got ready to do it, I thought, well, shoot, if somebody does have one of these new ZR1 front ends and they want to change this out, I might as well go ahead and show you just the, just the basics of it here. There's going to be, if you have this on there, you're going to have three, instead of the torque screws that you had originally in the in the original bumper, you're going to have some uh, Phillips screws in the, in the same three spots. Okay, so we're just going to re release those, undo those, just like that. Okay, so that's kind of out of the way there. Pull those out, and then. You may have rivets here if you follow the instructions, uh, the factory instructions, you may have rivets down here at the bottom. If you followed my installation video, you'll have Torx screws down here. Um, so depending on whatever you have, that's what you'll have to use to get them, get them free. Just like that. And then this little guy. There we go. It's got a bunch of stuff in here. It's already got it stuck. I'm gonna wipe all that down here in a minute. But now at this point, you'll be able to pull your your uh, fender out a little bit to get your wheel well pulled out. Okay. And it doesn't take a lot. And then at that point, you'll feel the clips on the very back. It comes out very very simple. Very easy. Just like that. Okay. So you can see here there's just a uh, just a little pull pin here. You pull that out, press down just a little bit, and you pull out. Okay. So now at this point, this one here is your is your like I said, your front, I guess this would be classified as your front left. And Okay, so you'll be able to see that they have, Oracle makes it very clear that this is a front left. You know, each one of them are marked just like that, so that way you'll be able to know, okay? And then these plugs are keyed, so you're not going to be able to get them in wrong either. If you try to plug it in the wrong direction, it just won't plug in. So you can go ahead and flip it around, and you can plug it right in like that, and you're good to go, okay? And then you would just be inserting it back into into there like that okay and if you want to check it before you before you do it you can come back and you can turn your lights on 
to make sure that, the, that it's going to work. Just like that. So we know that works and we can go ahead and we can move on to the next one and button it up. So now that you know that it's working, you can just go ahead and snap it into the fender. You can hear them clicking. And then you can take the protective covering off of them. Just like that. And we're done with the front one. And just put your, your winglet back on and you're good to go. But what you're going to do is you can, there's the three torque screws here, and I believe these are uh, T15 torques here that we need to, we need to uh, take out. Now, you notice I've got the, uh, the wheel turned inward. So this is the way you want to do this. Uh, if you're, when you're doing the other side, you would turn the wheels the opposite direction. You just want to be able to give yourself a little bit of room so you can move this, this inner liner out of the way a little bit. So hopefully my, my hands aren't totally blocking all of your, your view here. Kind of get my head in the way there, so just enough so I can see what I'm doing. To, so you guys can see this. Obviously, it'll be a little bit easier for you um, when you're doing this because you won't have to be dealing with the camera. Okay. Okay, so now what you do, you got these three screws out, you can just pull your fender out just a little bit. Okay, just like so. <laughs> this one came loose a lot more. That's okay. Let's we'll pop that right back into place. So now you've got this kind of in the here just wide open, right? And there's just some clips you can reach up in there and take them out. Now let me see here if I can get that in there. Let's see, I don't know if this is gonna actually show you guys anything. But you can see there's the plug-in right there. And you guys will actually be able to see this a little bit better here in a minute anyhow, once I get this pulled out. There's just, uh, just some little clips you can reach around and push them out. There's three clips. There's one at the, each end and one in the middle. And it just comes out, just like that. Now, at this point, there's a little lock pin right here. It's going to pull this up like so, and then it will come. Then you, once you pull this out like that, you push down on the same latch or the same little pin, and it comes right out. And I'm just going to use a little bit of window cleaner here. It's like so. So now at this point, let's see how this thing plugs in. So are we going to get lucky? I'm not sure. So we're just going to take that, we're going to slide this right back over. And this one plugged right in. So maybe it was just a, a freak thing on the other side, but that did not do that before. It, I had to constantly move the pins around until I got to plug in. Now at this point that's locked. I'm just gonna press this little, little gray tab down in there and we're good. At that point, all we're doing is we're just pushing it right back in the hole. Like that. Pull the cover off. And this side, we just gotta put the screws back in and we're good. Now before I go and do that, I have my remote for my car. So I'm just gonna activate the lights. You can see right there that they work, okay? So that all we're going to do now is we're just going to go ahead and we're going to put the screws back in. We'll tuck that liner back in there like so. Okay. Put the screws in. And we're done with this one. And then we'll move on to the back one. 
Well, I've got these out before I put the other side in. I wanted to show you the difference here. Here's the original um, one I've just pulled out that I had gotten from eBay. And this is the Oracle one, and you can see that they look darn near the same. So, uh, one other thing I did, did catch when I was putting these together is that you remember in the original video I told you that I had to spend a bunch of time with a small little screwdriver to get the little pins to line up didn't have to do that on these so that's that's cool I originally thought that when I when I was doing the original video I said you know that that's probably the case that the quality control is going to be a lot better to also and it was so I just wanted to point that out Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and put the new Oracle one in the back on my car. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, clip back to the original video that I did. There was a lot more detail on how to do this. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that and then we'll come back. We're at the back of the vehicle now and um, I just wanted to touch base here. We're going to have to take this mud guard off. Now this one is an ACS XL mud guard. Um, and I swear by these things, they are great. Um, but this isn't going to change. If you still have the factory mud guard on, this one's going to come off exactly the same way. So the, the GoPro is trained on the screws down below here, so it'll be able to get those screws as I'm pulling them loose. Um, and then this just pops, pops loose. So very, very simple. But I can tell you what, if you don't already have a set of these mud guards, Front and back, you need to be looking into those because I tell you what, that will save this paint. I can tell you that right now. So anyway, um, going down here, and hopefully the, the camera now down here is catching this, we've got three screws here. Um, this screw right here on the inside edge is the one that you're going to take loose. It's a seven millimeter screw. And this one you're going to take completely out. Okay. Now the other two, you don't have to but it just makes it this mud guard to slide out a little bit easier. I just loosen the screws a little bit. Again, you don't have to, but that's just my preference, okay? Now at this point, this will slide out. These all along here are all done just with clips, just like the factory. So this just comes right off, just like so, okay? Put that off to the side, we'll get that out of the way. Then we're gonna take our T15 Torx again and you can see right here, guys, that there's one here and one here, okay? So you notice I took the extension off. I've just got the little stubby here because you're gonna need a little bit of room because we're not, we're not taking the tire off. So hopefully, I'll try to stay out of the way of the camera so you guys can see this. get these screws out of here just like so so like I was saying this isn't hard you just take your time and uh, it's a couple steps not a big deal okay like that and then we can pull this inner liner just kind of out of the way Again, there's going to be a clip here, here, and here. I'm going to show you that right here on this one. you got a clip there, in the middle, the end. So that's all we're going to do. We're just going to reach up in there. Hopefully it will cooperate, cooperate with us. And we've got the one in the middle here. So we can pull these loose. You can see right there that it'll come right out. You're just going to pull that little the little locking pin out and push this down just a little bit and it'll come loose. Okay. Now again what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray a little bit of cleaner in here. And I'm just using glass cleaner. You could use anything you you know anything you want. You can just use water for that matter just to get the dust and the dirt out of it. So not a big deal. Just like that. Now let's see whether or not this just plugs right in or not. And you can see right there that it's not wanting to go in totally. So it's close. 
okay? But you want to make sure that it does, does lock. So at this point, we've got to bend these little tabs just ever so slightly. Because you don't want to force them in so much that you end up breaking them. And this is what I was talking about, guys. If we can get, if we could get <clears throat> one of the one of the bigger companies that makes these, um, get them to send us a set. We'll be able to do this type of comparison. We'll be able to tell because you, you know, obviously you can see I'm having issues here. So we've just got to get these things just right. And it just takes a little bit of doing. There we go. You can see right there, it wasn't that hard to do that, but it just takes a little bit. So then before I snap it in place, again, I'm going to use the remote on my car. And we got nothing. So you can see we don't have that, now it's working, but we don't have that socket in there just right yet. So I'm going to take this loose, pop it loose real quick. Make sure that we've got a good connection in here. And then it's going to lock in place. And I'm going to wiggle this jack around and make sure, because I don't want this thing to not work on me. Okay, so let's reset that. Okay, looks like it's working now. So then at that point, this is kind of a tight squeeze getting this socket to go through here. So. You just kind of have to wiggle it in there, just like so. Clips in place, pull the covering off, and you're good to go. So then at that point, all we're doing is we're just going to put the screws back together here. Put those little guys back in here so our fender is not falling apart. So then we're just taking our, our rock guard and you'll see in there that there's a slot right here where this little guy goes right here. Okay, you're just going to put that this little this little tongue here inside that slot and then that way it'll get pinched between the bumper and its screwing point and then that way it'll hold it from the bottom. So again I cover this uh, in, in great detail. In another one of, I have a couple different videos where I've done this on different cars, and um, that's how they how they hook on. So um, you know, I'll put a uh, I'll put a link to that in the video so you guys can watch that in case you guys haven't done that. Um, then you'll have it. Okay. So let's see if we can get right where we need to be here. Just like so. Okay, and then we've got our. 7 millimeter screw down here. Like that. Tighten these back up. And you guys are good to go. So now, we've got our lights. So, it's that simple guys. Well, we've got the lights installed, so now it's during the daytime, so I'm going to have to wait a little while. So I'll hop in the car here later on in the evening. We'll go ahead and we'll, we'll film that. We'll test it and make sure that the, the, the uh, tire pressure system uh, service light doesn't come on and that that solves the problem. And then we'll go from there. 
So guys, I've been driving now for about 35, 40 minutes. Uh, we were coming back from Napa on our way back to the house and you can see that um, my headlights are on and I'm running down the freeway and my I don't have any warning lights on. So my tire pressure monitor is, just, is working fine. Um, let me see if I can toggle over to that. see that it's all all the gauges are reading or all the sensors are reading um, all, they're all reading pressure so so anyway I uh, just wanted to show you that so um, that definitely fixed it so guys there you have it we didn't have any problems while we were driving down the road so these lights definitely fixed my problem so those of you whether you have bought a set of the cheap ones and you're having problems or if you have not bought some and you're thinking about buying a set now, be sure and reach out to vetlights.com. I'll put their information right here. Um, there might be some of you that don't like the, the ghosted uh, light here the, or the light tint uh, marker. They have all the different color, the body match color pieces also that will work. So, if you've got a white car and you want white ones, they've got white, they've got red, they've got every color you can imagine. So be sure and check them out. And not only do they do stuff for the uh, C7, but they do stuff all the way back to the C, uh, C4. And um, so be sure and check those things out. They've got, they've got road lights, they've got headlights, they've got under... Um, under hood lighting, they've got under body glow lighting, um, and one of the things that really sticks out with me is that they have for the C6. Those of you that have C6s and you really want to dress your car up, go look for their headlights. They have a headlight, and I'll see if I can find a picture of it from their site and put it up here so you can see it. But they have a headlight that replaces your C6 headlight. To make it look just like the C7 headlight and I tell you what you can't beat it and their costs the cost to get those are cheaper than if you had to go to the factory or go back to the dealer or somewhere and buy a set of C6 lights you can get all these upgraded ones for less money so uh, like I said if I had a C6 that would be exactly what I'm doing but but anyway um, just wanted to point that out to you that not only do they just do these side markers, they do a lot of different stuff with lights and from C4 all the way up. So anyway, uh, I just want to take a second to thank Cole. Cole, thank you so much for sponsoring the channel. Thank you for answering the, the quote unquote challenge that I put up in the original video that said, hey, if you got something better, let us know. Well, you did and I am so tickled that you did because now I can tell all my viewers that that uh, we have something better and that we know that works. So anyway, uh, guys, thank you. If guys, those of you that have been been watching the channel, I really appreciate it. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel. Please uh, hit that like button and hit that bell so you'll be alerted of our next uploads. Um, subscriptions are great. All of the all the sponsors they look at how many. Uh, how many people are subscribed to the channel and that opens up more doors for me to be able to bring more product to you guys to show, show it to you and see how it's done. So anyway, uh, guys, I just want to thank you all for watching and you guys have a great night. the Corvette channel. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to hit like and make sure to subscribe.